welcome back to my channel if you are new here my name is Shatoka and if you're a tiny subscriber thanks for coming back so today I wanted to give an intro to episode two of me making my vacation makes and I just want to say thanks to everyone who is watching the video you guys have been watching it I was kind of worried about the fact that it was longer but y'all watching it and I really appreciate it um so in today's video I'm gonna share three other makes um like I did in the last video but you guys I had my first fail um well it's not a fail completely but I'm not gonna take it to vacation and I'm glad that I still documented the process of me trying to figure it out and make it work and I'm gonna share it with you guys uh but I just wanted to give an intro to the video and just say thanks again for watching. I appreciate you guys. I am now about 10 or 11 days away from vacation and I still have a lot to do. However, I have like pivoted a few of my things. Um, for instance, like this shirt. This is a shirt that I got from Target, which is a part of like the Future Collective collaboration. I don't even remember whose it is, but... I love it. It's so cute. I pulled it out the closet <laughs> to do like this intro today. And I was like, yeah, you need to do something like this for vacation. I really like this. So I'm actually probably going to try to either look at my pattern envelopes. I mean, my pattern binders and see if I can find something similar. Or I might just draft a pattern from this shirt because I really do love it. Um, the sleeve is a little bit shorter than I would have preferred if I had sewed this myself. That's the problem that I run into when I'm buying ready to wear, but I still will shop, you know, in store for things as well. But I'm like, I like this. I think I might have to, you know, do one of these. So I'm pivoting. Um, I'm actually going to start doing um, some loungewear probably in the next episode. I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to draft a pattern um, based off of some shorts that I already have. So yeah, I just wanted to say thanks again to everybody who's engaging with the content. And we're going to go ahead and rewind and jump into episode two of me making my vacation makes. Hey, y'all back in the sewing room. So I figured I'd jump right into the most, like the easiest to less easy make. So the next thing I'm going to be sewing up is actually the shirt, um, dress. Well, I showed you guys this fabric in a previous video and this is the one that's shirt already. So after I did all that shirting on the other dress, I was like, yeah, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna do as many as I thought I was but I got this fabric on clearance at Joann's so all I have to do is actually sew up a center back seam on this one because I'm gonna have it be the full length of the fabric and just hem the bottom um so I'm going to do this next because there's literally just one seam in the back and then hem it and then I'm gonna move along to a romper that I have had cut out for over a week that I'm gonna sew up out of this like tie-dye knit fabric. I haven't used this pattern before, but it looks pretty simple. So I'm just like, you know what? Let me just jump right into something really simple. So I already like took out my threads. I'm going to hem it with this darker one since it ombres down at the bottom and just have the center back seam be with this fabric, I mean, with, with this thread. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to measure out 56 inches because the other fabric that I used for my, um, shirt dress, I'm looking over here cause it's on my dress form, um, was 56 inches wide. And I actually really like how that fit. So I'm just going to measure from the bottom because obviously at the top, if I measured out 56, it would be gathered. I want to measure 56 from the bottom where it is, uh, straight and then I'm just gonna cut straight up. So a center back seam, hem this dress, and it'll be done. Because the top is already hemmed. So that's all I have to do. So I'm gonna do this one, and then we're gonna jump into the romper. Not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish the romper tonight, but I'm like, you know what, let's let's get going. So I do have a few things cut out already, ready to go. So now when I'm coming home from work, I could just jump right into my sewing because I still have quite a few things that I wanna make. Um, and I'm actually going to be sharing with you guys too. I think it's going to be in this video because I'm not sure how I'm going to be splitting everything up because I do want to be able to share multiple makes in each video. So again, I'm going to measure. I really did enjoy the width of the other dress. So I'm just measuring that and I'm making a snip here. So 
So I am cutting from the bottom up and I'm going all the way up to the shirt portion. I really should have pressed this fabric out. It's <laughs> It was wrinkled the whole time, but I'm definitely gonna press her out before I wear her. After I cut it out, I held it up to me just to make sure that it was a good fit and it was. And then I decided to measure it again, just to check. So y'all, actually, this fabric is pretty much like hemmed at the bottom too. Well, it's not hemmed, but it's like, it's not gonna unravel. So I'll see. <laughs> I might be lazy and just like leave it because I mean, it's kind of like beachy boho anyway. So 60, well 50, I actually ended up measuring out 57 inches because I'm like, I'm gonna have a seam allowance to sew the center back seam. So I am now going to just pin my dress down the back. I, unlike the other one where I uh, overlocked both sides, of the fabric and then pressed open I'm just going to stitch this one straight down and then just overlock the seam together so again I am going to just sew a center back seam sewing all the way down and after I'm done with that I am going to overlock that seam Serging is so satisfying for me. I love seeing how everything is so nice and neat after you're done. Um, look, it's so cute. Um, I'll have to insert like a clip of like how long it is. But y'all, it's perfect. Like, get y'all some of this fabric that says Joann's that's already shirred for you. Like, like I said, I don't mind shirring. It's just like, if I got a bunch of stuff to sew, like, I don't want to be doing that. So, if you go to Joann's and you see this fabric, grab it because it's on clearance. I literally, it was on sale for 50% off, so like $12. And look, all it is is a center back seam. Like, that's it. <laughs> you still can't see it. But anyway, you guys, it's all the way on the ground. So, like, when I walk, I'm, like, stepping on it. And I don't want that. So, and y'all, I still got some fabric left. So, <laughs> I could make another one. Um, yep. Like, oh, my gosh. And I would not want to cut this fabric. I love this ombre. Like, I feel like that's such a waste if you cut the ombre out. But obviously everybody's not as tall as me. So like you have to cut it more and only get like a little bit of that dark green at the bottom. So cute. All done. I hemmed it. That um thread matched perfectly. So yeah, I just did a narrow hem. So now this dress is done. Another vacation make in the books. On to the romper. Okay, so I've moved on to the romper. I'm just going to do a few steps tonight and then I'll finish tomorrow. But like I said, it is a very like, it looks really simple. So this is McCall's 8218. And I'm going to do view C, but I'm making it short. So I didn't want that little tie this at the waist. So I'm just doing like the flat one. And I don't think I'm going to add the belt that's on C. 
So I looked at the first few steps. The first steps are to um, do the front and back. It's like a V. So I pinned the front and back and then I also pinned the front and back of the facing. I put interfacing on the, um, the facing for this. So I'm gonna do these two, interface that. And then after that, I'm going to attach the neck facing to the bodice portion. And then there is like an armhole band on here, but I think I'm just probably gonna overlock my armhole and then just hem it or narrow hem it. I don't think I cut out armbands. And then I'm gonna move on to the shorts. I think that's all I'm gonna do or just attach the pockets. Like I said, I don't think I'm gonna do everything in one day. I'm gonna pace myself, but we'll see. Who knows, if it's moving fast, I might just keep going. So I am sewing the sides together on front and back pieces of the top portion. And then once I'm done here, I'm gonna scoot right over to my overlock machine and serge. Next, I sewed up the facing pieces front to back. So there's a V in the front and the back. So these facings are important. I wouldn't skip this part. Okay, y'all. I have sewn the front and back together of the bodice. I sewn the facing front and back together. I have clipped one side and it fits just fine. However, the other side, I guess it's stretched out a bit. So I'm going to have to like finagle. I at first thought maybe I had it backwards, but no, I don't know what happened, but it fits perfectly in the front. So what I'm gonna do, I already have it pinned in the middle. Um, I don't know y'all, it's like a lot. So what I think I'm gonna do is unpin it in the middle because I do like there's a, a deep V I think I'm just going to continue to like clip down on one side making sure it's flat and then I'm gonna clip down on the other side making sure it's flat here and I might just have to split the middle V and like figure out how to do that i might have to overlap that like i don't mind doing something like that because in the grand scheme of things all of this is going to be turned inside anyway and then i'll probably most likely top stitch it or under stitch it um so that it lays flat inside so like i said this side which i believe that's the back because yeah I'm assuming the V is deeper in the front. So I am going to do that little alteration and then I'm gonna connect that. And then I think that's gonna be it for today. I guess I could try it on, try on the top portion before I add the shorts to the bottom because I haven't made any alterations to the, to the pattern. And a lot of times things are kind of like I need a little bit more room in the torso. So I could be running into an issue where I probably need a like middle band or something in between the bottom and the top of the romper. So we'll see. Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then I guess I'll try it on and then that'll be it for today and I'll finish tomorrow. So I clipped it as much as I could down, but it's such a difference. Like it's still such a big gap. You know, you can't even really see it. But it's still a big gap, so I'm just going to split this. Um, I'm just going to cut it. 
it's, it's not going to fit that way. And yeah, that it is what it is. So I'm going to just clip. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know, y'all. Oh, this sucks because the front fits perfectly. Huh, I wonder. Yeah, I think I'm. <laughs> this is so not the way it should be. But I want to, like, be able to go all the way to that point in the middle. So I'm actually just going to take pins. Yeah, I'm going to have to actually do it from the inside so I can see. Yeah. Listen, we are going to make it work. And when I wear it, no one's going to know. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to have to sew this from the inside. Um... Yep, I'm literally going to just make this work. I'm going to sew all the way down. Hopefully, yep, I'm literally just going to do that. So I'm going to bring the camera closer so you guys can see. So, I just literally split it and I'm going to sew into a point and then like like I said I'm gonna turn it in and top stitch and we're gonna see how it go <laughs> I'm glad I followed through with the facing I end up working it out it looks fine. I'm understitching, you guys. Um, understitching really helps with uh, turning your facings in. Um, you'll just get a better result by doing that. So I've already did that side. I had to like not do a continuous one because of this like wonkiness of this one. But now I'm just going to. Um, turn it to the other side and so with understitching if you don't know for some people you're going to stitch really close to the previous stitch the way you attach the facing um, but it's going to be away from the main fabric so it's going to be onto your like interface piece so then when you turn it in it'll like want to go that way it'll like force it in so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to press it and try it on closer to the point as I can but I don't want it to be bunched up right there so that stitch shoulder but should be able to go through the five. gonna go like to the edge and then backstitch and then start another seam because it's, it gets weird right there also too for whatever reason my um, scissors on my machine isn't working like right so I've just been pulling it and cutting um, I guess that's something I could take it into the shop for but it's like I remember I had a machine that didn't have that feature so I'm just like used to cutting anyway so but I've had my um, quantum Silas for a few years now. I love it. Like, um, 
um, I noticed on the last uh, video it was kind of loud like sometimes I do think it needs like some oil or like a, a visit to the shop but like it's fine right now like <laughs> I'm like it's fine it's fine it'll be fine it hasn't stopped working on me but I do have a place that I take it to locally that I, it gets serviced Like I said in the video, I am a snip as you go person. So there will always still be like things you have to snip in the end, but like at least those little, whatever I see while I'm sitting here, I'll snip. So I won't have as much to do at the end. So now that's that that's understitched, now it'll turn in easier and now I can press it. Not sure if I'm gonna top stitch now. I might not be have to. Um, sometimes I just top stitch for an added feature, or if it's not laying, um, I'll top stitch. But we'll see. <laughs> so yeah, there it is. Now I'm pressing the facing flat. Pressing is so important in sewing. It makes everything look so much better. Okay, my lighting in my sewing room at night is not the best, but I put it on and it is kind of like crop, but I mean, that's not bad because remember, it's a romper and I'm just gonna hold the shorts portion up and I feel like it's gonna be okay. I do think it's gonna be short though. Let me see, let me move you guys over. So, let me see, hold on. So, I'm just like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay. I don't think I'm gonna need like an extra, um, like, middle piece for the romper um it's gonna be like short though but that's fine like it's vacation so with this i believe it is elastic at the waist so it will cinch in a little bit more but the fitting is fine the v is nice and crisp on the front the back is kind of like a little bit bumpy but not like something that is like noticeable and again like i said this print is really forgiving so I think I'll be fine. It's super soft. It feels like pajamas. And like I said, I'm not gonna do armbands, arm facings or whatever. I'm just gonna like overlock my arm and like narrow hem it. And yeah, we're gonna call it a day. But I am glad that this romper does have pockets. So what I am going to do is before I leave the sewing room tonight, I'm going to pin my pockets on the shorts and then I'll be ready to finish tomorrow. I'll definitely finish this tomorrow. So here I am the next day. Um, I started after I got home from work on the shorts. So I am pinning the front and back together. I'm gonna sew that up and then I'm going to attach the pockets. So after I attached the front and back pieces, I added the pockets and now I am closing the side seams where the pockets are. All right, you guys, I have on the short portion of the romper and I like the fit. I love that it has pockets, of course. We love a romper with pockets. Um, of course, right now it's like kind of big in the waist area, but that's because it actually, when attached to the top part, you then make um, 
a casing for elastic and then it'll be cinched in the waist um there is an elastic guide i believe in here but i've found that usually those guides are not as accurate so what i usually do is just take my own elastic um and just measure it around my waist just pull it so it's a little bit tight but not too tight um and then i just feed it in through there but as far as the length, I think it's good. Um, I'll just do a narrow hem at the bottom, or actually I might just overlock um, the bottom and then top stitch the hem. But yeah, like, I don't know if I should have paid more attention to the uh, print placement, but you know, it's a busy print, it's fine. Like, I'm not really worried about um, that but yeah overall I do like how it fits I believe I cut a large I'll put up on the screen what size I cut but I believe this is a large but yeah super simple so now I'm attached the top to the bottom and then I'll come back and show you guys how it looks so here's what I usually do I just take my elastic and I'll put it around my waist I believe this is like where it should be like the smallest part and I will tug on it a little bit but not too too tight and then that's what I'll use as my guide instead of using the guides because like I said usually when I've done the guides I've had to go back in and take some elastic out because it's too like it's not enough elastic well it's not tight enough it's like loose and elastic is supposed to hold snug not super tight but like hold it up in place so here it is you guys um the lighting isn't the best in here um but i'm done i hemmed it um i don't think it's too short i mean it's not really long but i think it's perfect for a romper but i love that it has pockets and this is a size 18 by the way i thought it was like small medium large like that this is actually a size 18 um i have the pattern envelope for uh, 16 through 24 and so yeah I think the 18 was a good choice so I have room um, in the waist area I didn't want this to be like a super tight um, romper so all done moving on to the next make hey y'all back in the sewing room so now that our romper is done I'm gonna move on to my next project that I have cut out. And this is an older butter rig pattern. Um, this is butter 6652. And it has a romper and two dresses in there. I'm gonna do view A, which is the um, shorter dress with that one sleeve. And I already have my fabric cut out here. This is actually some fabric that I thrifted. Um, so, I think today all I'm gonna do, because I did work today, I'm kinda tired, not in the mood really to sew, but I do wanna get a few things done. So I have already pinned um, the bottom of the skirt portion. I'm gonna sew up both side seams, and then I'm gonna sew up the front and back of the top. Right now it's looking pretty big. I think I cut an extra large, but this is kind of like a relaxed fit dress and it has an elastic waistband. Actually, let me look in here and see what size I cut. But right now, looking at the pieces, I'm like, this looks kind of big. So let's see what I cut. Yes, I cut an extra large. So we'll see. I'm going to keep it going. I mean, if anything, it'll just be you know more flowy i think i actually only have the size large to extra large so i decided to cut the extra large and yeah so like i said i'm just gonna do those two steps and then oh actually i had already painted like the one sleeve so i'm gonna do that too and then that's probably gonna be it for today um today is wednesday what is today like the 24th i believe so we leave on august 9th so i still have time but like i said before i don't want to be sewing up to the last minute i would like to at least be done with everything at least two days before um <laughs> we fly out so yep let me go ahead and jump in
So I started with the top portion of the dress, sewing the sleeve together, front and back together, and then overlocked. I noticed that my bobbin had ran out and so I went ahead and swapped that out. As far as going through the pattern instructions, I'll always look over them, but sometimes if it's a simple make, I'll just go with the flow. <laughs> a lot of times they are really self-explanatory. Also, sometimes I prefer to go in a different order. I'll do the steps the way the pattern calls, but in a different sequence. So I actually did decide that I'm going to do another step. So I did, um, I did sew the front and back of the top and the front and back of the sleeve and the skirt portion which here's a skirt portion here but i want to focus on the top this evening so now i'm going to actually connect the one sleeve to the top so <clears throat> i did overlock um the shirt top on each side i didn't do it to the bottom yet because i don't I'm gonna wait and see because I don't know if I'm gonna have to take this in. So I am turning this out right sides together. So I'm gonna match up my notches first and then I'm gonna sew the sleeve on. Oh, here we go. Let me grab my pins. So yeah, hopefully um, this turns out. I just figured this was a simple dress. I've had this pattern for such a long time, but I have not sewn it up yet. And I just was like, this one will come together really quickly. I actually just went through my um, pattern binders and was looking at a few other things that I think I'm gonna end up making. I am making some changes to my plans. I mentioned it in the last video too, because um, I just want a lot of just like easy breezy things um my goal is to not be wearing like shapewear and all that stuff like it's gonna be high i don't want to have layers of clothes on so i'm making a lot of things that are like flowy um i do think i want to make there's this one dress that is kind of more form-fitting but i think i'll be able to be fine without <laughs> having to wear like spanx and stuff but i do think i want to make it um out of that so I pulled those aside. So that'll be um, in the next episode, some more dresses. Um, I think this dress is going to be the last thing I put in the second episode. So there'll be three makes um, in that episode. And then I'm gonna move on to making my um, swimwear. I think I'm gonna save the swimwear for last. Um, I mentioned that in another video because worst case scenario if i'm still making clothing closer to the trip like we're just gonna repeat some swimwear <laughs> so but i do have a plan to make some like simple swimwear um that i know will come together quickly so yep so i have it all pinned along the underarm pretty much that's what it is because it ends up being like an elastic at the top and yeah i'm gonna do that step and then what does it say next after that oh and then the strap so there is a strap on the other side i'll probably go ahead and sew that up and attach that and then i'll be done for real <laughs> so there we have it i have connected the sleeve to the top so again, it's looking to me like it's kind of big, but we're gonna follow through with the extra large. But again, it's gonna be elastic at the top. And then I'll probably do it just like um, I do like my waistbands. I'm not going to use an elastic guide because yeah, there is an elastic guide in here. Um, well, you know what? I probably will for this one because it's like probably gonna be weird trying to um, 
measure from like shoulder all the way around it's easy to do it down here but doing it for like up here going in the angle i am going to use the elastic guide for this one so i'll have to grab that pattern piece out so it looks like you just pretty much make a casing and feed it through the top yeah so what i'm gonna do actually i'm going to overlock the top of the top and then i'm just gonna fold it down and make a casing instead of like doing a double fold i usually like do that like i save a step <laughs> so yep and then i did also um sew a strap i'm just gonna like turn that out and then we'll continue tomorrow start it by connecting the top to the bottom What are you guys sewing up these days? Are you still in full sewing for the summer mode or have you already moved towards fall? Hobby Lobby had 40% off of fall fabric today, but I stayed on track. <laughs> you guys, I ended up sewing together the top to the bottom of the dress and then you have to sew a second row of stitching to make a casing for the elastic. So I left an opening and what I'm gonna do now is use the elastic eye. I am gonna use the elastic eye for this one and cut out my elastic and then I'm gonna feed it through. Make sure I like the fit of it and then once I do, then I'll go ahead and overlock Definitely should not have used this elastic guide on either the shoulder or the waist. So, y'all, I got the elastic in here and I have a lot left and I think I'm just going to kind of pull it a little bit tighter and cut all this excess off see this is why i usually don't do the guides <laughs> because i just feel like they are not a good um indicator of my size um i mean i did cut in an extra large and i feel like like okay so even if i cut it now like it's still, I mean, it will be able to sit snugly on my waist, but not like as tight. And I have all this extra. So I don't know. And again, I don't want it to be like super duper tight, but like it kind of defeats the purpose of it being elastic waist if it's not cinching in the waist. Like then I'm gonna feel like I need to put a belt over it or something. And I don't wanna have to do that. I actually have enough fabric to be able to do that. Like if I wanted to belt it, I could, but I just really wanted it to be fitted in the way so that I didn't have to do that. So we'll see. I'm gonna actually, I think I'm gonna cut here. So I have all of this extra on one side and this on the other side, I think I'm just gonna cut them both even about like right here and then overlap them and pull it in and then I'm gonna try it on and let you guys see hopefully that works because it's gonna be a pain pulling it out and trying to reconnect it I mean not so bad but like I, I just don't want to have to do that extra step so I'm gonna make sure that it's not twisted around in here and I could have used like a bigger elastic, but I was like, you know what, let's let's be um just do a little thin elastic. So let me go ahead and connect this together now and then I'll try her on for you guys. Only a couple steps left. As I suspected, it is really big. Um I wasn't even gonna show it to y'all because it it's so big. Let me put this down and so you can see. So I haven't even put the elastic at the top because I'm like, I don't even know if I want to continue. This is the waist. It just looks really boxy. And I just read the description and it does say very loose Mrs. Dress. Um, I could cut it down to a large and try to follow through and see if it looks okay. 
but I'm like, do I want to go through that or do I want to just move on to the next thing? Because this is like, it, it's not doing anything. It's just fabric. <laughs> just, it, it ha it's not doing anything. So, um, part of me wants to at least like put the elastic at the top and then maybe see about, I don't know, like, it's just, it, yeah. This, I knew it looked big, but sometimes you'll, like, I'll say things look big and then I try it on and it's tight or too small. So, this one definitely is a very loose fitted, fitting dress. I'm going to show you guys, like, what it's supposed to look like on the little mannequin lady. Like, to me, they don't look that loose fitting. It's, um, the one shoulder right there. I don't know. I think... I'm gonna go ahead and add the elastic at the top and then come back and show y'all because yeah right now it's a no <laughs> I have so many other things to make that I'm like I'm not even mad if this is a no so we'll see okay we're getting there guys but we're still not there so something said um don't close up the elastic yet because I still feel like look at this I could take some more of that elastic out. Also, it's cinched in, but it's still such a boxy look that, like, I personally don't like things like this without a belt. Unless um, I can cinch it in the middle more, like, with more elastic. But I feel like even if I keep pulling out the elastic in this, it's not going to be the same. So it's sort of like... Um, the new look pattern that I did that was like a really flowy type of top and then I put a belt on it that I made and it made it so much better and then on the pattern envelope you see she has her her romper one belted so I pulled out my elastic belt that I put on everything and you guys like watch, watch the difference like it goes from you know it's just a basic like kind of oversized like dress to if I define my ways, it just, to me, personally, looks so much better. Like, it's just more defined. Um, I prefer to have things cinched, especially if it's like a flowy kind of gathered dress. I prefer to have things cinched. So, I don't think that I'm going to take this on vacation with me, but I would wear it like, you know, just out and about. Um, and I'll probably end up making one of my OB belts that I made for like those new look tops um, because they are, I'm grabbing it now, because they are really nice, um, these belts. I've made three so far um, because I have extra of this fabric. So I'll probably end up making an OB belt um, when I get back or whatever because I'll take, even though this doesn't match, I'm just going to show you guys how it would look. Um, and then again, like I said, I am going to take some elastic out so I won't have this gapping here. And then if I make this dress again, which I don't know if I'll get around to it because I have so many other patterns to get to. Just not even for this trip, but just period. Um, I'll definitely cut down to a size large. I do have the envelope for large through extra large, so I don't have like that smaller one. But like, so say for instance, here's the like the OB belt. Like, it would just, to me, <laughs> look so much better. Obviously, this is like a different type of print. But to me, that, that just looks much better, more flattering for me on me than just having it kind of baggy. So, yeah. Um, again, I'll get some wear out of it, but definitely not going to take this one with me. I have so many other things to get to like I just cut out a dress right here and it's ready to go so yeah you guys so as far as the blue dress goes I'm definitely gonna wear it at some point but not for the vacation um 
Again, I'm gonna make an Obi belt and it'll probably be cute in the end. But as I said in the um, clip in the video, I have so many other dress patterns that I wanna get to. So I'm not gonna revisit that. I'll rather like start from scratch with something else. But yeah, I actually ended up going to Hobby Lobby today and I picked up a few new fabrics that I think are now gonna push some other things out the way for me to make. So yeah, I'm just gonna sew up until it's time for me to go. And then I'll pack and figure out, okay, what's going to make the cut. Uh, thanks so much for sticking around for the video and stay tuned for the next episode. So until next time, bye.